Yeah, welcome back to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. And today is the 3rd of September. Is that right? Absolutely. All right. So on this day in history, 1981, uh, what happened was that the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CIDAO, um, is an international bill of rights for women, was instituted on this day in history by the United Nations. Um, on this day in history, um, 189 states ratified this International Bill of Rights for Women, and over 50 countries have ratified the convention so far. Yeah, they did that subject to different you know, declarations, reservations, and observations. Um, there were 38 countries who rejected the enforcement of Article 28, 29. That article um, basically addresses the means for settlement of disputes concerning the interpretation or application of the convention. The first 39 sessions were held in the United Nations headquarters in New York City, while the fourth yet and subsequent sessions held in Geneva. Uh, now, over time, the practices of the committee have evolved due to increased focus on women's rights issues. But Nigeria um, basically you know, went ahead to ratify all forms and all sections of the CIDAL without any objections so far. And in July 2017, um, what happened was um, they constituted this committee to go ahead and take a look at how far Nigeria has gone regarding observing all the um, you know, sections of CIDAO. And they found lots and lots of gaps, lots of loopholes regarding um, the national policy of Nigeria concerning women, you know, involving women in, in political life, you know, care of women, you know, policies against discrimination, you know, so Nigeria really had those loopholes and they gave a list of recommendations for Nigeria to go ahead and implement such that, you know, women, you know, are more considered when it comes to opportunities and things like that in the country. But it was on this thing history, um, 3rd of September 1981, that this International Bill of Rights for Women was instituted um, by the United Nations. Yeah, but, but till, till date, I think Nigeria still has a lot of flaws in the... Um um, laws uh, concerning women. There's still a lot. I think that there was a, it was either in 2020 or 2019. Someone did a a long Twitter thread on um, you know certain you know places in Nigerian constitution and Nigerian laws that um, are somehow some way um, um, skewed against women. And she did a whole year's worth, um, almost maybe six months or a whole year every single day. She was adding a new one every single day that you could check out in the constitution that shows um, where women, you know, are very, very poorly represented. But the good thing is that with all the flaws in the constitution, definitely that's that can be a given. But the Nigerian good thing is that there have been actually. sorry, uh, not the Nigerian constitution. I think they are criminal justice act. And okay. The good thing is that there have been other laws that have been constituted, um, domestic laws of Lagos 2007, yeah. um, the VAP. There's so many other laws that have now, you know, come into play for the protection of women. So when we take a look at the list of laws, trust me, there's a whole, when it comes to policy making regarding women, it's, it seems to, to be a lot. There's a lot. So I would not say that our challenge is in the laws. There are laws. These are things that I have studied. The challenge in this country is implementation. There are definitely laws that protect women, you know, guarantee your right to freedom, right to movement. You, you know, you, you have protection against abuse, sexual and gender-based violence, and all of that. The laws are there. You could list them. International laws and treaties, local laws, laws formulated on the state level, on the national level, policies here and there. But when it comes to the implementation, that way, that's where the bottleneck is. When you, let's say a woman is abused and she goes to the police, you find out that because the police lack training when it comes to SGBV cases, they tell you, they make right. nasty statements. They lack, you know, the funding to prosecute those cases. So there are challenges with implementation, but when it, when it comes to laws, I'll tell you that the country has done fairly well um, regarding instituting these laws yes, um, I in agree. the country. Um, so it's, it's there theoretically, it's the practical that's the challenge. We still have a lot of um, religious and, um, and uh, tribal biases, you know, that need to be worked on. You know, so they may not be in paper, but, you know, there are these biases against women that um, you can almost smell you know, with every single situation that you, you hear of concerning women. And so that's also one of the challenges. You know, yes, the CIDAO and, of course, you know, VAP, uh, many other new um, um, laws that have come into place, um, or acts, rather, that have come into place, which are amazing, 
uh, but the religions and tribal biases was, you know, they still exist here every now and then. And you, if you look at, you know, chaotic situations that have involved women and the way that uh, the Nigerian society treats those situations, you can already tell um, that there is that bias. Rape, you know, inclusive and, and murder. And, you know, when even, you know, the most common one that people always mention, you know, when, when a, a husband dies, um, someone was saying yesterday about... It's called um, harmful widow... It's crazy. Practices, yes. um, I think it was a lady who shared a story uh, two days ago on, on um, social media about her uncle kicking her and her family out because, you know, her, um, her dad died a few months ago. And there are laws that um, protect women against harmful widowhood practices. Yeah. There are actually laws that, because first of all, the issue is information. Are you aware that you actually have rights, that you're protected under the law? Like when, if your husband dies, if, if you lose the head of the home, you, you know, someone cannot just kick you out. There are laws that protect you from that. So it's basically plugging yourself to NGOs that are, you know, great in that space. I, I know particularly one, Project Alert, very, very active in that space. So plugging yourself to those NGOs if you find yourself in those situations where you feel sidelined, oh. marginalized, or abused. And then, you know, to take it up, uh, take it up, you know, with the courts and make sure that you get justice. Yeah. Um, more of the story is we've done well, but a lot more work still needs to be done with regards to protection of women and giving women a very, very balanced and fair society to live in. Let's move away from the SIDAO Act and uh, let's now talk about Burundi. In 1987, um, on this day, that w there was a bloodless coup that took place in Burundi. Um, it, uh, of course, uh, led to the ousting of uh, President Jean-Baptiste Bagaza, who was deposed by Major Pierre Buyoya. Um, it, um, he was a Tutsi president, Jean-Baptiste uh, uh, Jean uh, Bagaza, and was deposed while traveling abroad and eventually succeeded by also a Tutsi president, Major Pierre Buyoya. Uh, he was appointed initially president of Burundi following a military coup in 1976. It is wild. And then eventually deposed in 1987, also via a coup. He had traveled to Quebec in Canada to attend a Francophone summit. And while he was there, um, the coup took place. The army took over, led by Bagaza's cousin, Major Pierre Buyoya. Hearing of the coup, he immediately returned to Africa, but the airport was closed. And in Nairobi, he was refused entrance into Kenya. Uh, following the coup, Bagaza fled to Uganda. And then in 1989, in Libya, where he was granted political asylum. Buyoya then formed the Military Committee for National Salvation to, to uh, take control and suspended the country's constitution. Um, it is a very, very familiar story with regards to Africa and Africa's history. Mm. Coups, blo both of bloody and the bloodless coups, uh, so many of them. Haiti is the latest one that we've heard about, where the president was assassinated. His wife was also shot. Um, and, you know, that's, that's a long history of military chaos concerning Haiti. And, of course, the influence of the West and, um, you know, sanctions here and there, uh, uh, um, corruption, some of all. There's so much that's happened to Haiti. It's a really, really sad story. Mm. But anyway, um, that's uh, Today in History in 1987 in Burundi. That story, really, when I read it, is actually quite interesting, really. So it's, it's what we've seen across Africa time and time again. Cool uprising, you know, just military takeover of power. And what's funny here is that this, this was a coup. Cool started by his own cousin. Yep. He was basically cut off from power and uh, Bagaza became one of the longest serving dictators in Burundi. Well, between, um, um, between 76 and 87. Yes, yeah. and Bu Buyoya um, sadly passed away last year. Um, I beg your pardon, Bagaza um, passed away last year due to COVID-19, um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, that's what happened today in history. Um, I went back to the year 1981 to tell you about the SIDAO that was instituted today. And also in the 80s, 87, the coup in a uh, bloodless coup in Burundi. We'll take a short break. When we come back, our first major conversation, what's going on in Zamfara State? And in other states in northern Nigeria, um, what exactly is it like living in Zamfara as it stands? We'll be talking with a uh, former uh, president of the NUJ in Zamfara, who's joining us uh, this morning on the program. Stay with us. We'll be back. <laughs> 